Thanks, Jonathan. So back in 2016, Dirk Knotts and myself, we published a paper in Science, basically explaining why there is a clear linear relationship between Arctic sea ice and how much CO2 we add to the atmosphere. And this allowed us to establish the relationship that for every metric ton of CO2 we add to the atmosphere, we lose another three square meters of sea ice in summer. And as you can see, this linear relationship continues to hold through to even today with the 2020 September sea ice area falling exactly on this trend line. The graphic allows us then to clearly see how much additional CO2 we can add to the atmosphere before ice-free summers emerge. Uh, advance the slide. So only if we keep the amount of emissions as given under the RCP 2.6 emission scenario, which basically keeps the warming below one and a half degrees Celsius, can we keep the summer CS in the Arctic basin in 2050? If we go out to the RCP 4.5 or 8.5, all of those cumulative emissions basically show us that we will have no more sea ice in the summertime in the Arctic Ocean. Next slide. So, you know, because there's also a relationship between, of course, global temperature and CO2, this same linear relationship then also pertains to temperature. So another way to look at it then is if we were to limit our warming to one and a half degrees, we see that we can still keep the sea ice in the Arctic Ocean in September. But as soon as we start to reach about 1 and 1.7 degrees Celsius, ice-free summers start to emerge. However, given that we're not on track for 1.5, um, advance the slide, and that we're actually looking at a minimum overshoot at the moment of 2.7 degrees Celsius of global warming, we can see that it's not just that we'll lose the sea ice in September, but we'll start to see ice-free conditions that emerge already in July and might persist through October to November. Advance the slide. And if we stay on track where we currently are going under the RCP 8.5, we're off this chart, and we're looking up to seven months of ice-free conditions if we reach that kind of warming. So, you know, at least with the sea ice, we can clearly see that there is this relationship that there's these thresholds that if we cross them, we're gonna start seeing no more sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. And it's not just summer that we're talking about. Uh, next slide. So today's reality is that large parts of the Arctic Ocean are already ice free in summer. And it's very different from what it used to look like in the 90s, where if you had a low sea ice year, you might have it low on the Eurasian side, but more on the Pacific side. But now we see, and this is pretty much since the early 2000s, that every part of the Arctic Ocean now has seen large retreats of a summer sea ice, so that large areas along uh, North America and Eurasia are now completely ice-free in summer. Uh, next slide. However, while the summer sea ice loss has been quite dramatic and it has gained a lot of media attention, the departures from average have actually become larger in the shoulder seasons. So this plot looks a bit complicated, but it basically shows how many standard deviations the ice was below the 1981 to 2010 long-term average for each calendar month on the y-axis and by year on the x-axis. So blues show mostly negative departures, so less sea ice than average, and yellow are positive departures. And since about 2005, we mostly see blues, but the largest departure from average occurred this past October as it took an unusually long amount of time for the Arctic Ocean to refreeze again. Also, in May and November of 2016, we had larger departures from average conditions than we saw in September 2012. And so this really highlights that it's not just the summer sea ice that we're losing. So I know we focus a lot on summer, but this is happening now in all times of the year. Next slide. Finally, this is the future we're looking at based on the latest round of climate models that go into the next IPCC report. And I see a problem with my graph. For some reason, the shading disappeared. Um, so what you're seeing is, a, is the average from all the climate models in these solid lines. And you would have seen shading had this graphic appeared properly. Um, but basically, given the large range of a natural climate variability, the shading would have shown you that no matter which emission scenario you follow at the moment, there are chances of ice-free conditions happening already by 2050. Um, that's just because the internal variability is so large that you could have individual years become ice-free already by 2050, regardless of what we do right now 
with our greenhouse gas emissions. But the other thing that's in, interesting and, and very different from the last APCC report is that if we follow the business as usual scenario, so we look at the RCP 8.5, it's not just that we lose the summer sea ice, you're also starting to see these big changes in winter. And this is what we're already starting to see in the observational record today, that these ice losses are not just in summer. Okay, so next slide. So why should we care, of course, about all of this? And you've sort of already heard about it in some of these previous talks. And of course, one of the big parts of this is that we're losing the reflective sea ice cover, which helps to keep our planet cool. Sea ice reflects most of the sun's energy back out to space. And so if we lose it, the oceans start to warm up. And then you have the ocean acidification that we've heard about. But what you also know is that it amplifies the warming in the Arctic, which will impact on Greenland melt, it'll impact on permafrost thaw that we heard about, coastal erosion, and of course, ecosystems that depend on the sea ice for their functioning. But it's not just that these changes are gonna impact the Arctic region. Warming the Arctic faster than the rest of the planet also impacts on our weather systems at lower latitudes and global ocean circulation patterns. So that what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Everything is connected and thus these changes that are happening within the Arctic Ocean right now are something that we should all be worried about as we go forward. The good news is, is that, you know, CS loss is not irreversible. Climate model simulations do show that if we were to stop the greenhouse gas emissions, we could recover even if we start to go through ice-free conditions, which is what's going to happen as we go forward. But as we also heard, there's a lot of heat now in the system, so it's going to take a while for this climate system to recover. Thank you.